To say that things have been tumultuous for Ilya Sutskever, one of the founders of OpenAI, since his attempted coup back in November of 2023 is probably an understatement. Of course, recently we heard officially that Ilya had left OpenAI, and he said that that was to free him up for something he was very passionate about. Now we know what it is. It's a new company that's going to try to achieve artificial superintelligence in one shot. And if that sounds both exciting and terrifying, you're not alone. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I'm gonna release this same video or pretty much the same video on both Dr. Know-It-All and also on Dr. Knows AI because I'm not exactly sure which channel this is going to be best suited for. Anyway, you can choose which one you wanna watch it on. Before we continue, I wanna take one quick moment to flag this particular post. This is from Tesla Chan that said, according to the news, Tom Zhu, who's one of the higher ups at Tesla and pretty much runs Tesla China, mentioned that the FSD launch in China will be quote soon. Tom Zhu visited one store and one sales staff answered the question Question, when FSD will be released as per above. So not much more to say about that, but hopefully it's not Elon's classic two weeks or else we'll be waiting until next year. All right, so on to the story that broke yesterday. Ilya said, I am starting a new company and it's called SSI Incorporated. And by the way, how they actually managed to get an at SSI is pretty impressive. I guess Ilya knows Elon and maybe he was able to work out a deal for that because that seems like the kind of handle that would have been used years ago. So I don't know exactly how they managed that, but anyway, very cool that they did. So let's turn to the post itself, SSI Incorporated. Super intelligence is within reach. That's a pretty bold statement right there. Building safe super intelligence, SSI, and by the way, SSI just means safe super intelligence, is the most important technical problem of our time. We've started the world's first straight shot SSI lab with one goal and one product, a safe super intelligence. It's called Safe Super Intelligence Incorporated. SSI is our mission, our name, and our entire product roadmap because it is our sole focus. Our team, investors, and business model are all aligned to achieve SSI. We approach safety and capabilities in tandem as technical problems to be solved through revolutionary engineering and scientific breakthroughs. We plan to advance capabilities as fast as possible while making sure our safety always remains ahead. This way we can scale in peace. Our singular focus means no distraction by management overhead or product cycles, and our business model means safety, security, and progress are all insulated from short-term commercial pressures. We are an American company with offices in Palo Alto and Tel Aviv, where we have deep roots and the ability to recruit top technical talent. We are assembling a lean, cracked team, and I, I thought the term was crack team, but maybe that's, maybe that's what the kids call it these days. Anyway, we are assembling a lean, cracked team of the world's best engineers and researchers dedicated to focusing on SSI and nothing else. If that's you, we offer an opportunity to do your life's work and help solve the most important technical challenge of our age. Now is the time. Join us, Ilya Sutskever, Daniel Gross, and Daniel Levy. And just real quick from this high scaler article, just noting who these people are. By the way, I'll leave a link to all these sources in the description, of course, as per usual, so you can read this at more length. Anyway, it says Ilya Sutskever, a pioneering figure in AI research and former chief scientist at OpenAI and one of the co-founders. And then it says he co-founded the new company, Safe Super Intelligence, SSI, alongside Daniel Levy, a former AI engineer at OpenAI with a strong focus on safety, and Daniel Gross, who previously led the AI team at Apple. So obviously these guys are major players in the AI space. The interesting question is who the heck is bankrolling this? Because if we go back to these highlighted paragraphs, you can see that they're basically saying, we don't want to be a business. We have one focus. We want to do it in a single shot. In other words, like, you know, it's the same kind of thing as going to the moon with a single stage. It'd be like if you just built a really, really, really big rocket, which would be an insane thing to do. And you were able to launch it from the earth all the way to the moon and land it on the moon. That's the kind of insanity of what they're doing here. And of course, with compute needs and everything like they are, this is going to require billions, if not tens of billions of dollars of investment. So somebody out there is willing to put in massive amounts of money without an expectation of return for quite a while. Now, if and when they actually do get a return and if they can get to SSI first, we're talking about like unicorn squared, right? A unicorn company is basically one that hits a billion dollar valuation at some point. And these guys are probably looking for multiple trillions of dollars of valuation, perhaps decades trillion dollars, tens of trillions of dollars, because if they can get to SSI first and have a reasonable lead over other companies, they would be able to basically name their price. They would kind of control the world. So it's that kind of insane risk reward equation that the investors must understand and be on board for doing. So I, I don't know. I don't know who's investing in this. It'll be very interesting to find out who is, but whoever they are, are taking very high risks and not expecting anything in the short term. So very, very interesting. Y'all know I'm a tech fan, but 
I'm also a huge watch nerd. I love high-end luxury watches, but they're priced like high-end luxury items. That's why I was incredibly excited when Aura Watches contacted me to sponsor today's video. Aura produces beautiful high-end watches at an amazing price. Just look at these gorgeous designs. I have a 70s-inspired Tiffany Blue date model with integrated bracelet and a mesmerizing black skeletonized watch that I can't stop staring at. And these aren't some cheap quartz watches either. They're fully mechanical watches with a high quality beating heart and an open case back so you can see how all the complex mechanics work together to tell the time. And better yet, they're automatic winding so you can just wear them and they're always fully wound, accurately telling the time every day. With dead flat sapphire crystal fronts and 50 meters water resistance, they're tough as well as beautiful. This AP Royal Oak inspired beauty with date and gorgeous Tiffany blue tapisserie dial is a stunner. I can't wear it out of the house without getting compliments and questions about where to get the watch. It's got an industry standard Seiko NH35A movement and is an extremely wearable 40 millimeters and only 11.75 millimeters thick, so it fits right under any cuff. And check out Aura's skeletonized watch in black and gold. You can look right through the high quality Hangzhou 7500A movement and see all the inner workings from both sides. I love the way the gold pops from the black, the way you can see the escapement beating from the front, the gorgeous finishing, and the super wearable size at 40 millimeters width and 11.75 millimeters thick. It's perfect for just about any wrist. Be sure to click the link below and use my code DOCTOR30 at checkout to get an additional 30% off anything on the site. That makes Aura's incredible values even better. And be sure to check out Aura.watch for their huge selection of amazing watches, as well as different strap options so you can mix up the look easily. They even include a simple tool to adjust bracelet links so you can have the perfect fit in no time. Remember to click my link and use Dr. 30 to save 30% off your new favorite watch. And now let's get back to it. One concern I have, of course, with this is the fact that this is going to cause them to be completely insulated from the outside world. And that is a little bit distressing, right? I'd much rather that they'd come out and said they're going to publish their research or at least white paper it or something like that and keep us all up to date. Yes, they don't have to release products, but I would like to see their progress and see what they're doing. But it sounds like they're going to be super secretive. So if open AI is closed AI, this could potentially be like ultra closed AI. We might never know what's going on until they're ready to spring it on us. And that that is a little bit terrifying to me. So right, the good end of things is we could end up with super intelligence and that would be an amazing thing. But also super intelligence is terrifying because we don't know exactly what's going to happen at that point. That would be the singularity that Ray Kurzweil and others talk about. But the equally big problem here is that we might never know how close they are. They might be like, yeah, we're getting close. We're getting close. We're getting close. Never say a word to anybody and then suddenly go like, here it is. Here's the SSI. And at that point, if something that's way smarter than humanity comes out, what sort of defense do we have? We're we're basically helpless in the face of that. And we're helpless in the face of this company. That's why I said it would be deck a trillion dollar opportunities. Great for the people investing in this. I'm not so sure about humanity at large. So I'm not sure this is the right way to do it, but I also understand insulating themselves from business needs because that forces a rush to productize things and reduces the focus on safety. So hopefully they're doing this right, but we're gonna kind of have to trust them because it sounds like they're not gonna be very open about what they're doing. Now, Ilya or Daniel or Daniel, if you're listening to this by some chance, I'd love to have you on my channel to talk about your company and also to explain how you're gonna keep us all in the loop, the general public in the loop, because I feel like this is an important enough task. If it's successful, it's going to completely transform society. And so I think that society is therefore owed something in terms of keeping up to date with what you all are working on. Again, not asking for a product. I totally understand your rejection of the traditional business model and productizing these things, but I do hope that you will keep us in the loop about this because it's just too important not to. So thank you in advance for that. And again, if anybody wants to come on my channel and get into the weeds, I would love to have you on. So I'm going to get to an Ashley Vance interview in just a second. But first, Ilya, in response to his own post, said, we will pursue safe super intelligence in a straight shot with one focus, one goal, and one product. We will do it through revolutionary breakthroughs produced by a small cracked team. Join us. So I guess that's not a misprint. I guess cracked is the term. I'm just too old to understand what it is. All right, with that in mind, let's turn to this Ashley Vance article. Ashley gets all the good stuff. He's done quite a few biographies, including one on Elon Musk, and obviously gets access to 
all the cool people first. Anyway, the article that's published in Bloomberg, and like I said, I'll leave a link to this in the description, is Ilya Sutskever has a new plan for safe super intelligence. OpenAI's co-founder discloses his plans to continue his work at a new research lab focused on artificial general intelligence. For the past few months, the question, where is Ilya, has become a common refrain within the world of artificial intelligence. Ilya Sutskever, the famed researcher who co-founded OpenAI, took part in the 2023 board ouster of Sam Altman as CEO before changing course and helping engineer Altman's return. From that point on, Sutskever went quiet and left his future at OpenAI shrouded in uncertainty, and that was very true. Then in mid-May, Sutskever announced his departure, saying only he'd disclose the next project in due time. Now Sutskever is introducing that project, a venture called Safe Super Intelligence Incorporated, or SSI, aiming to create a safe, powerful artificial intelligence system within a pure research organization that has no near-term intention of selling AI products or services. In other words, he's attempting to continue his work without many of the distractions that rivals such as OpenAI, Google, and Anthropic Face. This company is special in that its first product will be the safe super intelligence, and it will not do anything else up until then, Suskiver says in an exclusive interview about his plans. It will be fully insulated from the outside pressures of having to deal with a large and complicated product and having to be stuck in a competitive rat race. Then as Vance notes here, Sutskever declines to name super intelligence's financial backers or disclose how much he's raised. As the company's name emphasizes, Sutskever has made AI safety the top priority. The trick, of course, is identifying what exactly makes one AI system safer than another or really safe at all. Sutskever is vague about this at the moment, though he does suggest that the new venture will try to achieve safety with engineering breakthroughs baked into the AI system, as opposed to relying on guardrails applied to the technology on the fly, which by the way, I think is a good idea. And that's exactly what Musk's XAI is doing. They're trying to bake in curiosity and alignment at the root level of the AI. Sutskever says, by safe, we mean safe like nuclear safety, as opposed to safe as in trust and safety. Sutskever has two founders. One is investor and former Apple Incorporated AI lead, Daniel Gross, who's gained attention by backing a number of high profile AI startups, including Keen Technologies, and something I didn't know is that Keen is trying to develop an AGI based on unconventional programming techniques. What that means? Have no idea. The other co-founder is Daniel Levy, who built a strong reputation for training large AI models working alongside Sutskever at OpenAI. I think the time is right to have such a project, says Levy. My vision is exactly the same as Ilya's. A small, lean, cracked team, there's the word again, with everyone focused on the single objective of a safe superintelligence. Safe superintelligence will have offices in Palo Alto, California, and Tel Aviv. Both Sutskever and Gross grew up in Israel. So like I said, being old, I had to look up cracked on Urban Dictionary. It's an internet gaming term used for people who are insanely good at something. So there you go. I guess it's like crack on steroids or maybe even crack on crack, right? Given Sutskever's near mythical place within the AI industry, which is very, very true, the uncertainty around his status has been a Silicon Valley fixation for months. As a university researcher and later a scientist at Google, he played a major role in developing a number of key AI advances. His involvement in the early days of OpenAI helped it attract the top talent that's been essential to its success. Sutskever became known as its major advocate for building ever larger models, a strategy that helped the startup surge past Google and prove crucial to the rise of ChatGPT. With Sutskever's plans only grew after the drama at OpenAI late last year. He still declines to say much about it. Asked about his relationship with Altman, Sutskever only says that it's good. And he says Altman knows about the new venture in broad strokes. Of his experience over the last several months, he adds, it's very strange. It's very strange. I don't know if I can give a much better answer than that. Safe superintelligence is in some ways a throwback to the original OpenAI concept, a research organization trying to build an AGI that could equal and perhaps surpass humans on many tasks. But OpenAI's structure evolved as the need to raise vast sums of money for computing power became evident. And again, that's not going to change with SSI, so I don't know how they're gonna deal with that. This led to the company's tight partnership with Microsoft Corporation and contributed to its push to make revenue generating products. All of the major AI players face a version of the same conundrum, needing to pay for ever-expanding computational demands as AI models continue to grow in size at exponential rates. These economic realities make safe superintelligence a gamble for investors who would be betting that Sutskever and his team will hit on breakthroughs to give it an edge over rivals with larger teams and significant head starts. Those investors will be putting down money without the hope of creating profitable hit products along the way. And it's not at all clear that what safe superintelligence hopes to make is even possible. With superintelligence, the company is using AI industry lingo to refer to a system that would be in another league than the human-level AIs most of the largest tech players are pursuing. 
There is no consensus in the industry about whether such an intelligence is achievable or how a company would go about building one. And I would say that's definitely true. I personally feel the architectures we have right now, large language models, are not going to be up to the task. I'll do a video more specifically on that in the future, but that's beyond the scope of today's video. That said, Safe Super Intelligence will likely have little trouble raising money given the pedigree of its founding team and the intense interest in the field. Out of all of the problems we face, raising capital is not going to be one of them, says Gross. Wow, what a nice problem that is. Researchers and intellectuals have contemplated making AI systems safer for decades, but deep engineering around these problems has been in short supply. The current state of the art is to use both humans and AI to steer the software in a direction aligned with humanity's best interests. Exactly how one would stop an AI system from running amok remains a largely philosophical exercise. Sutzkever says he spent years contemplating the safety problems and that he already has a few approaches in mind, but SSI isn't yet discussing specifics. At the most basic level, safe superintelligence should have the property that it will not harm humanity at a large scale, Sutzkever says. After this, we can say we would like it to be a force for good. We would like to be operating on top of some key values. Some of the values we were thinking about are maybe the values that have been so successful in the past few hundred years that under pin liberal democracies like liberty, democracy, freedom. Sutzkever says that the large language models that have dominated AI will play an important role within SSI, but that it's aiming for something far more powerful. With current systems, he says, you talk to it, you have a conversation, and you're done. The system he wants to pursue would be more general purpose and expansive in its abilities. You're talking about a giant super data center that's autonomously developing technology. It's the safety of that that we want to contribute to. All right, so about a year ago, XAI entered the race to do an artificial general intelligence. Now we have another competitor in the AGI space, but they're basically saying they want to leapfrog AGI and go straight to super intelligence, which is really interesting, but also really, really terrifying. The fact that they want safety baked in at the base layer is a really, really laudable goal, but I'm a little bit concerned about the fact that you have a bunch of engineers who are going to be insulated from the outside world and have no real pressures from society who will be working on this. I'm sure that they have the best in intentions, but one small recommendation I would make as you all are hiring people, since clearly raising funds is not going to be an issue, is please hire a diverse array of people. And by that, I specifically mean a diverse array of intellectual backgrounds. You can't depend on just engineers. You're going to need artists. You're going to need philosophers. You're going to need people who think about literature and history and on and on and on. If you want to do this right, you're going to need to have enough people that have a broad enough perspective outside of just engineering that they can help you steer this thing towards being very, very safe. And just like I requested this of XAI, I don't know if they're doing it or not, I would also request this of you as you're hiring your initial team. You, you really want to think about the broader scope of humanity and not just treat this as an engineering problem. It is a societal problem. It's way too important just to put it in the hands of people with a very, very similar backgrounds. You need people with a broad spectrum of backgrounds. So please do consider that if you're paying any attention to this. And for everybody watching this, definitely let me know in the comments what you think about this. And finally, a huge thanks to Aura Watch for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to click my link in the description and use Dr. 30 at checkout to get 30% off your favorite new watch. And in the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.